Hi guys, in this video we'll look at the number of solutions to quadratics, the discriminant, examples, and we'll finish with a summary. So what are the different number of solutions that quadratics can have? We can see that different quadratic graphs can have different numbers of x-intercepts. If we look at this particular graph, we have two x-intercepts. If we look at this graph, we have exactly one x-intercept. And if we look at this graph, there are no x-intercepts, or zero x-intercepts. We can also see this from algebra by completing the square. Namely, if we take x squared plus 4x plus 3, and we complete the square, then we're going to get x plus 2 all squared, i.e. half of the middle term, and then we have a minus 1. Similarly, if we have an x squared minus 6x plus 9, and if we complete the square again, we're going to get an x minus 3 all squared from half of the middle term, but this time our constant is 0. Lastly, if we have x squared plus 2x plus 2, this gives us x plus 1 all squared, and we have a plus 1 on the end. When we try to find the roots of these quadratics, the constant terms left over from completing the square can tell us the number of solutions. If we try to set the left-hand side separately equal to zero, we can instead set their right-hand side completed square form equal to zero instead. So for our first equation, we can have x plus two all squared minus the one is equal to zero. We can therefore rearrange and get x plus 2 squared is equal to 1. Now the important thing is that this value is a positive constant, i.e. plus 1 on the right hand side. And so if we square root, we're going to have two solutions to this equation. For our next equation, say x minus 3 all squared, we can have x minus 3 all squared, and this is equal to 0. Then here, this requires no rearranging. We still have x minus 3 all squared is equal to 0. Here we have no constant on the right hand side, i.e. 0. By square rooting, we'll only get one solution, because we'll have x minus 3 is equal to 0. Plus or minus 0 is still 0. Finally, for our last equation, we have x plus 1 all squared plus 1, and we can set that equal to 0. Then by rearranging, we can get x plus 1 all squared is equal to minus 1. And because here we have a negative constant on the right hand side, we're not able to square root, and so we get no solutions. There is no number for which you can square and get minus 1. We would like to have an easier way of finding how many solutions a particular quadratic has without having to complete the square. So what exactly is the discriminant? Recall that we can solve a general quadratic using the quadratic equation. Let's say we have our quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Then we can use the quadratic equation to get the roots of our quadratic. So we have x as being equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and this is all divided by 2a. We can see that the term which follows the plus minus determines the number of solutions. If we have our equation x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0, we use our equation and get x as being equal to minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 8, all divided by 2. This kind of equation has two solutions. Because our square root of 8 with the plus or minus gives two different values. Similarly, if we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and we use our equation again, then we're going to get that x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 0, all divided by 2. This equation, therefore, is going to have one solution, because plus or minus square root of 0 is the same value. The solution will just be minus 1, corresponding to the minus 2 over 2. And lastly, 
if our equation is x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0, then we will get x as being equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 4, all divided by 2. So therefore here we have no solutions because there is no such thing as the square root of minus 4. In general, we call the expression b squared minus 4ac the discriminant and denote it by delta. This b squared minus 4ac is what we find underneath the square root in our quadratic equation. We let delta be equal to b squared minus 4ac for a general quadratic. Again, we call this the discriminant. By evaluating the discriminant, we can quickly determine the number of roots of a given quadratic. In general, for a quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and we have our discriminant, which is delta, is equal to b squared minus 4ac, then if our discriminant is strictly positive, this corresponds precisely to two real roots of our equation. If we have our discriminant being equal to 0, this corresponds to one repeated real root. We call it repeated because the plus and minus cases are the same. And lastly, if our discriminant delta is less than 0, this corresponds to no real roots, i.e. no solutions. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to determine the number of roots of the equation x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Our first step is to recall the definition of the discriminant. We have our discriminant delta can be found by doing b squared minus 4ac for a general quadratic. Our second step is to write down the coefficients. We have our equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 in general. And our equation is x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Therefore, our coefficients are a equals 1, b equals minus 3, and c equals 5. Our third step is to substitute the values into the discriminant formula. Again, our discriminant delta is given by b squared minus 4ac. And so we have our discriminant as being equal to minus 3 for b, all squared, minus 4 times a times c, which is 4 times 1 times 5. Our fourth step is to evaluate the discriminant based on the above substitution. We have delta as being equal to 9 minus 20, because minus 3 squared is 9, and minus 4 times 1 times 5 is minus 20. This gives us minus 11. Our fifth step is to recall the case when the discriminant is negative. If we have our discriminant as being strictly less than 0, this corresponds to no real roots. So our last step is to state the number and nature of the roots. Our discriminant is equal to minus 11, which is strictly less than 0. And therefore, we have 0 real roots. Our second example asks us to find the values of m for which mx squared minus x plus 4m equals 0 has equal roots. Our first step is to recall the definition of the discriminant. We have our discriminant delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Our second step is to recall the case when we have repeated roots. We are looking for equal repeated roots, and so we need delta to be equal to zero in order to have one real repeated root. Our third step is to compare coefficients for our equation. In general, the equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Our equation is mx squared minus x plus 4m is equal to zero. So we compare coefficients, and we have a as being equal to m, b as being equal to minus 1, and c as being equal to 4m. Our fourth step is to substitute values into the formula for the discriminant. Again, we have our discriminant delta as being equal to b squared minus 4ac. Therefore, our discriminant delta is going to be equal to minus 1 all squared minus 4 times m times 4m. Our fifth step is to form an equation using the condition for repeated roots and the expression for the discriminant. We have our delta as being equal to minus 1 all squared 
minus 4 times m times 4m. And we want to have that delta is equal to 0, in order to have equal roots. Therefore we want minus 1 all squared, minus 4 times m times 4m, to be equal to 0. Our sixth step is to simplify the equation. Our equation is minus 1 all squared, minus 4 times m times 4m, is equal to 0. Therefore we have 1 for the minus 1 all squared, minus 4 times 4 is 16, m squared is equal to 0. Our seventh step is to solve the simplified equation. We have our equation 1 minus 16 m squared is equal to 0. By rearranging, we can get m squared on its own as 1 over 16. Therefore, by square rooting, we have that m is equal to plus or minus 1 over 4. Our last step is to write down the possible values of m. In order to have equal roots, we can have m equals 1 quarter or m equals minus a quarter. Our last example asks us to find the values of p for which minus 3x squared plus px minus 12 is strictly less than 0 for all x. Our first step is to recognise the type of quadratic. Our quadratic is minus 3x squared plus px minus 12. And if we notice our a term, we have minus 3 is strictly less than 0. And therefore, it is a negative quadratic. And so the shape is like this. Our second step is to recognise how many x-intercepts are present. In order to have minus 3x squared plus px minus 12 is strictly less than 0 for all x, based on the shape of the negative quadratic, this corresponds precisely to no x-intercepts. The graph is less than 0 for all x, so there couldn't possibly be an x-intercept. Our third step is to draw a sketch of the graph of the curve given by the expression. It's going to have to be somewhere down here, where this is our graph of y is equal to minus 3x squared plus px minus 12. Our fourth step is to recall the definition of the discriminant. In general, we have our discriminant delta as being equal to b squared minus 4ac. Our fifth step is to recall the case when the discriminant is negative. If we have our delta being strictly less than 0, this corresponds precisely to having no real roots, which is the case that we have here, because our function is to be less than 0, therefore no x-intercepts. Our sixth step is to compare coefficients. In general, our quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Here we have our quadratic minus 3x squared plus px minus 12. Therefore, we have our a as being equal to minus 3, our b as being equal to the value of p, and our c as being equal to minus 12. Our seventh step is to substitute the values into the formula for the discriminant. We have our delta as being equal to b squared minus 4ac. This is our discriminant. Therefore, our delta is going to be b squared, which is p squared in this case, minus 4 lots of minus 3 for a multiplied by minus 12 for c. Our eighth step is to form an inequality. We must have that delta is strictly less than 0. And therefore, p squared minus 4 times minus 3 times minus 12 is strictly less than 0. Our ninth step is to simplify the inequality. We have our p squared, our numerical value minus 4 times minus 3 times minus 12 is minus 144, and this is strictly less than 0. Our tenth step is to start solving the inequality by first solving for equality. We take p squared to be equal to 144 to find the values of p which are critical, namely p equals 12 or minus 12. Our eleventh step is to sketch the graph of the discriminant against p. We're going to have our discriminant up here and our p down here, and our discriminant is going to be equal to this p squared minus 144. And so we can have a sketch looking something like this, where our values here and here are important, minus 12 and 12, but we're looking for delta to be strictly less than 0. And so it's going to be this section of the graph, where delta is strictly less than 0. Our last step is to interpret the graph. 
if we have that delta is strictly less than zero, by examining the graph, we have that P must be strictly between minus 12 and 12. And this gives us our range for P. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.